Am I the asshole for making my boyfriend rehome his German Shepherd? Me and my boyfriend have been together since we were in university. We're both 23 and recently moved in together. We both went to our local university, so we both lived at home so we'd be able to save money. Around a year after we started dating, my boyfriend got a German Shepherd puppy. I've never been a fan of German Shepherds, but I'm a dog lover, so I wasn't going to tell him not to get one when we weren't even living together yet. When we moved in, my dislike of German Shepherd was confirmed. The dog leaves hair all over the place, barks whenever someone walks by our house, needs extreme amounts of exercise, I could go on for hours. However, I was willing to put up with it since my boyfriend had otherwise trained him well. I now realize how stupid that was since the dog breed seems to have problems regardless of how well it's trained. I recently got a Rottweiler puppy and to say that I formed a bond with him would be an understatement. The German Shepherd, on the other hand, didn't take too kindly to the puppy and would have made it disdain for the dog known. Me and my boyfriend took the dog to the vet to see where the issue could come from and she told us that some German Shepherds just don't get along with other dogs. My boyfriend suggested that we may have to rehome my puppy due to his puppy's disdain of him and he could still find a good home since he was only five months. The thought of rehoming something I loved for a dog I couldn't stand mortified me. And to think that the only reason for rehoming him would be because of another dog's nasty behavior didn't make the situation any better. I told my boyfriend that there was no way I was rehoming my puppy and that I'd be willing to move out if need be. After days of arguing, my boyfriend took the dog to the local shelter. The house has been much quieter since and I can honestly say it was one of the best decisions I ever made. My sister, on the other hand, didn't hold the sentiment and actually referred to me as an evil bitch for putting my boyfriend in this position. So it got me thinking, am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for trying to prove if someone's boobs are fake? One of my 30 female close friends, male 30, went on a date with this girl. The next day, we all went to the gym and he was raving about her body, especially her chest. I took one good look at her and proceeded to tell my friend that her boobs were most definitely fake. I could tell right away that they were a bit too perfect to be real. My friend then asked if it's because I've seen her naked before in the locker room. I actually haven't, but that doesn't matter. He begs me to find out if they're fake or not, but I refuse. The problem is, now that I put the thought into his head, he doesn't want to date her anymore. A few days later, I was in the sauna at the gym when my friend's date, Sidra, walks in. I overhear her telling her friend how she went on this amazing first date and he asked her out on a second date, but out of nowhere, calls and cancels and says he doesn't want to see her again. I scoff loudly and apologize for eavesdropping on their conversation. She then starts removing her towel while introducing herself to me. I got up to shake her hand but lost my balance and fell right into her while my hands grabbed onto her chest to break my fall. And... Well, they're most definitely real. I then tell my friend Jerry about what happened at the gym and he freaks out because he canceled his date based on my assumption. I feel really bad for making the assumption first, but Jerry is also at fault for canceling a date over such a simple matter. To find out what happens next, tune into Seinfeld coming to Netflix October 1st. Am I the asshole for not having my stepdaughter in the family photo? I, 32 female, and my husband Jack, 36 male, have three kids together. Lydia, 5, Carol, 2, Solomon, 8. Jack has an Ephraim, 8 female from a different marriage. It's our last week of summer before the kids start school, so we decided to rent a lovely little beach cottage for the week. It's a common theme in my family to take Christmas card photos while on vacation, so naturally I wanted to take the photos while we were away. Here's a problem. Jack is white, but Anephrine's mom is black and she turned out looking very much like her. I don't care what race she is, but my parents, however, are pretty racist. I have limited contact with them for several reasons, so they've never met Anephrine, but we're on Christmas card terms. I don't want to send them a card that Anephrine is on because they will make a fuss about the certain word with the hard R child. So my plan was to take pictures with just me, husband, and bio kids for my parents and a couple of other relatives and then have her be in the picture for Jack's family and our friends. But when I called picture time and told the nephron she wasn't going to be in this picture but the next one she started to look upset. I did let her take our pictures which lifted her spirits and we got some lovely pictures with her too. We also got some ice cream and she hasn't been upset beyond that initial moment. The trouble came later when Jack asked why I didn't want a nephron in the photo. He said he thought it was maybe so I could get one with all of my kids. I didn't want to lie to him so I told him why because I don't want a nephron to be exposed to people who could potentially emotionally hurt her. Just like that, he went from being understanding to pissed. And I guess he said, she didn't want you in her picture because you're black or something like that to his daughter and now she's upset with me too. I really wasn't trying to hurt her in any way. I did this out of care and love, but I think I might have done it in a wrong way. So am I the asshole? Did I mess up by asking a coworker how his girlfriend's driving test went? Me and another coworker accidentally triggered one of our other coworkers. We have a small workplace slash shop where everyone's business is constantly spread around. So a coworker of ours recently started dating a girl after splitting from his wife. This new girl was a few years younger than him and did not have a driver's license and was going to college. We would kind of tease him about driving his girlfriend everywhere. He was also somewhat reserved in speaking about his relationship like intimacy, but he would laugh everything off. Anyways, he requested some time off to go take his girlfriend to do her driving test. Later in the afternoon, he came back to the shop and when he walked in, I asked, so how did the test go? And my other coworker said, yeah, did she pass it? 
In response, he just looked at both of us in a confused way and angrily spotted, what the F? He shook his head and said, why does everyone need to know all my business? And then he went on and on about how nobody can have a personal life at this place. After his rant, he said, it went all right. The doctor just gave her some cream and said that she will need to apply for a few weeks. And if I developed anything, I will too. But right now I'm fine. Silence. I looked at my other coworker and he looked at me like, what the? Both of us cracked a smile and then I looked back at him and said, the driving test? And his face went so red, he hurriedly said, oh yeah, she passed it and quickly left. My other coworker and I busted out laughing. So this dude's girlfriend had picked up an STD from a different dude. Not long after that, everyone in the shop did know his business, but it was his own fault, right? Would I be wrong for leaving after six and a half years with no proposal in sight? I, 25 female, have been with my partner, 29 male, for six and a half years. I'm getting fed up with the fact that we haven't gotten married yet. I am ready for the next chapter of our lives and just feel stuck. I can see why you may be thinking I'm shitty. I would too with that heading, but hear me out. We've been together six and a half years, are financially stable, own a home together for four years, and have a dog together. He told me three years ago that he was ready, and a proposal still hasn't happened. We've been through a lot together and have grown together. We went through my brain tumor diagnosis, my grandma who raised me passing, his grandpa's passing, and more. He just tells me to be patient, but he won't give me a reason as to why we are waiting. When I've asked him about it, he always tells me that there's nothing holding him back from getting married. He says that he wants the same thing as me. He swears that it's going to happen for us and even told me he had something planned before COVID hit. But I know by his own admittance that it wasn't more than just an idea. He knows marriage is very important to me, which he has always said he's on board for. He also tells me that he'd say no to a proposal from me because he'd be hurt I took the opportunity away from him. I feel like my needs are being dismissed without even being given a reason. If he would communicate concern i'd be more understanding but this just feels ridiculous the more time that passes the more frustrated i become i never ever want to be that woman to give an ultimatum but i can't wait around forever if it isn't going to happen i know that sounds terrible but if we weren't on the same page we both need to be able to find that person with the same goals wants and needs in life right so would i be wrong for leaving him am i wrong for deleting my friend's wedding photos in front of them I'm not really a photographer, I'm a dog groomer. I take lots of photos of dogs all day to put on my Facebook and Instagram. It's my thing, if that makes sense. I very seldom shoot things other than dogs, even if I have a nice setup. A friend got married a few days ago and wanting to save money, asked if I'd shoot it for them. I told him it's not really my forte, but he convinced me by saying he didn't care if they were perfect. They were on a shoestring budget and I agreed to shoot it for $250, which is nothing for a 10 hour event. On the day of, I'm driving around following the bride as she goes from appointment to appointment before the ceremony, taking photos along the way. I shoot the ceremony itself and during the reception, I'm shooting speeches and people mingling. I started around 11 a.m. and was due to finish around 7.30 p.m. Around 5 p.m., food is being served and I was told I cannot stop to eat because I need to be a photographer. In fact, they didn't save me a spot at any table. I'm getting tired and at this point kind of regretting doing this for next to nothing. It's also unbelievably hot. The venue is an old veteran's lesion and it's like 110 degrees and there's no AC. He tells me I need to either be a photographer or leave without pay. With the heat, being hungry, being generally annoyed with the circumstances, I asked if he was sure and he said yes. So I deleted all the photos I took in front of him and took off saying I'm not his photographer anymore. If I was to be paid $250, honestly at that point, I would have paid $250 for just a glass of cold water and somewhere to sit for 5 minutes. So was I wrong in the situation? Am I wrong for giving my friend THC infused oral strips? My friend and I recently hung out together and she saw me using an oral strip and asked me to try one thinking it was a breast strip. Oral Leaf is a discreet cannabis infused oral strip that speeds up and enhances the desired effects of THC. The strips were made by Love Pharma. Love Pharma is a future-looking company in an ever-changing industry offering innovative products through disruptive technologies, growth proven and perspective that target mental and sexual health, improving the quality of everyday life for all individuals. Their goal is to enhance both sides of the wellness coin by offering naturally occurring therapeutics backed by scientific research. Love Pharma supports all of its products with as much clinical data and research as possible and was recently listed on the Canadian Stock Exchange on Quest Trade. Am I wrong for not lying about why I could not remove my headscarf? I, 24 female, am a bridesmaid for one of my closest friends, Jackie, 24. I've been so excited to help. I was in charge of the bridal shower, the games, decorations, and menu. I left the guest list to Jackie's sister. Due to religious reasons, I wear a headscarf. I love and am very proud of it. In the group chat with other bridesmaids, I was talking about how excited I am to attend a girls only event. I recently dyed my hair and wanted to show it off. I even paid extra to ask for a girls only staff that day. Day of, as guests arrive, I realize one of them is Tori, 26 female. I know Tori as a family friend of Jackie's, but the few times I met her, it was before her transition to female. I was aware of it, but unaware she was coming to the shower. I don't mind at all, of course, and she's a lovely person, but I decided to keep my scarf on. 
As everyone's eating later, I'm passing by the tables to make sure everyone's good and one of my bridesmaids mentioned that they hadn't gotten to see my hair and they wanted to see it. I tried to dismiss it at first or say, oh, I'll show you later, but the other girls at the table got curious. I got uncomfortable and I just said, oh, I'm actually not really comfortable taking it off right now. When pressed as to why, I said there's guests I don't feel comfortable taking it off in front of. There was a collective, oh, and I thought, cool, that's over. But one girl got aggressive and asked if I was referring to Tori. She's loud and the other tables turned to look. I don't answer. The girl asked if I wear one around men, so I say yes. She then says there's no men here, so clearly you should take it off. I tell her again that I'm keeping it on. Another bridesmaid defends me and tells the girl to chill out. Tori comes over and says me not taking it off is a slap in the face to her identity. I'm just shocked and had no clue what to do. Eventually, Tori and a few girls left saying that they felt it was disrespectful. I feel awful that this ruined a beautiful day for my friend. It's causing more trouble with people threatening to leave the wedding over discrimination towards me or towards Tori. I don't think I was in the wrong. Just as Tori can be Tori, I can be me. I feel like it'd be the equivalent of me making Tori or someone else adjust for me. I feel like we should just accept and respect each other rather than be woke one-sided. My question is more about being honest as to why I couldn't. Jackie is on my side, but Jackie's sister is giving her hell for it, saying she purposely left out that detail in the guest list to test me. Jackie says I should have brushed it off and said I was having a bad hair day or avoid giving an answer. I didn't ever mention Tori's name in my answer, and I don't think my answer was rude, but seeing how much stress it's causing, I'm thinking I should have made up a lie. So, am I wrong for how I handled the situation? Am I wrong for taking my friend to court after she kicked me out of the bridal party for cutting my hair? For my friend's three-day wedding, I had to buy three different dresses, including alterations and specific shoes, which totaled over $700. She also wanted specific hairstyles for each day. Unfortunately, starting in March, my hair started to deteriorate. Due to health reasons, my hair was falling out in chunks and in May, I made the difficult decision to cut my hair. I told the bride about my decision two weeks before the wedding and she didn't say anything bad. The following week, she came over to my house and when she was about to leave, she brought up that she was concerned about my haircut and I told her it would look good even though I wouldn't be in uniform with the other bridesmaids. The following day, I received this message. After our recent conversations, I'd like to remind you of my boundaries. I've been very accommodating and graceful, but I cannot allow you to disrespect me. As you know, my wedding has been something I've dreamt of for many years. My husband and I have invested a lot of money into the video and photos of this day, and as we reflect on this day in the future, we want to see our vision reflected in the memories. Since I asked each of you to be my bridesmaids in 2019, I've been very clearly and very communicative in my request. The timing of your decision to cut your hair and not income in advance is very upsetting to me. I would have felt respected if you had communicated with me more than a week prior to the wedding, so we could have worked together to find a collaborative solution. Your inconsistencies have concerned me, and while I sympathize with your health conditions, I'm not willing to compromise my vision to accommodate you, or anyone else, when you have informed me in advance and we could have found a better solution. Since this is something you can no longer fully commit to, I need you to please step down from participating in my wedding. This was three days before the wedding. I immediately sent her and her husband an invoice asking them to reimburse for the dresses and shoes, keeping in mind that one of the dresses is still in her possession even though I paid for it. I was told I was inconsistent and selfish after I spent the past two weeks helping her plan the wedding shower. I worked with another bridesmaid to surprise her with a bridal shower after our bachelorette trip had to be canceled. I spent hours helping her out with wedding details. When she asked me to help her tone up before the wedding, I sent her a personalized workout program and even went with her to the gym to show her the ropes. When I agreed to be her bridesmaid, I was more than willing to oblige with what she asked even if at times it was a lot of time and money. So am I wrong for taking her to court because she kicked me out for cutting my hair? Am I wrong for kicking my brother out for announcing his wife's pregnancy right after I announced my daughter had cancer? Just to make sure I represent both sides of the conflict, my brother and his wife suffered from not having kids for years. It impacted them greatly. They loved the kids in the family but always wished to have kids of their own. Lately, we got busy with my daughter Megan who is 12 health problems. She started suffering from anemia, loss of appetite, and recurrent fevers. We've taken her to the pediatrician and from there we've learned that she has cancer. It was so devastating, I didn't want to tell my family right away. Most of them have chronic conditions and this type of news might trigger a negative reaction because they love Megan and would give everything to see her healthy. My husband and I decided to gather the family at my house this past Wednesday to announce Megan's diagnosis. My aunt didn't take it well because she holds Megan dear so she was rightfully the most devastated one. After a few minutes of complete silence, my brother started moving in his seat saying there's something very serious he wanted to tell everyone. He was hesitant but then he and his wife stood up and then he said that they found out that they were finally expecting. The family were conflicted. Some got up to congratulate them and some remained seated. I remained seated and my brother then approached me and expressed how sorry he was that they had to tell us in these circumstances, but said he couldn't wait since this is a huge deal for them after years of waiting and because everyone was present. Literally everyone was there since I said the announcement we wanted to make concerned Megan. 
I argued with him about how he thought this was an appropriate time and asked if Megan mattered to him at all since he didn't take a minute to realize she was just diagnosed with cancer. He started reminding me how many years he and his wife suffered from frustration and disappointment for not being able to have kids and argued that because he wasn't able to be a father until now, he's 37, he felt he was missing out on so much for many years and that I didn't have to finally tell him congratulations but should at least not guilt him for feeling overwhelmed and excited to finally be a father. He said I knew exactly how much he adores Megan and I shouldn't even think otherwise. Then said he was just sharing good news after hearing the bad news and there was nothing wrong with that. I told him and his wife to leave the house right then. He said he won't argue anymore because of how tense I felt but will expect me to apologize at some point. Some family agreed with me but my parents thought I shouldn't have taken my anger out on him like that and that he'll always remember my reaction to the news he gave and should apologize after I've calmed down. So was I wrong for my reaction? Am I wrong for telling my sister her rainbow baby isn't special? I, 27 female, have a set of twins, Ben and Betty. They just turned six. My sister, 32 female, has Connor who is four. My sister and her husband lost their first baby due to SIDS. It was devastating for the whole family and I was behind my sister 100% of the way. I couldn't imagine what it was like. Anyway, when she found out she was pregnant with Connor, we were all excited. The pregnancy went well and Connor got a good bill of health. I love my sister and I love my nephew, but my sister is convinced that because he's her rainbow baby, that that means he can do whatever he wants. Connor is incredibly spoiled and a brat. He throws fits to get his way, hits, kicks, cries, whatever it takes. My sister and her husband give him no discipline. He's their rainbow baby, so that is their excuse for his bad behavior. Their lives are to serve for whatever Connor wants. My twins just turned six and we had a small party for them. Everyone was having a good time except for Connor. He wanted cake, didn't like the games, wanted to watch TV, wanted ice cream now, didn't want other kids to touch him, and etc. Basically, the whole party, Connor threw a tantrum. The final straw came at present time. My husband went to get the gifts out of the living room only to find Connor had ripped nearly all of them open. My sister made excuses saying he was just excited and wanted to play with my kids' new toys. I lost it. I told her that Connor isn't special, that he's a brat and he's been ruining the party since he got here. My sister immediately went on that he's her rainbow baby and he didn't mean it and maybe I should have put the presents where he couldn't get to them. They were in the living room and the party was outside. No one was inside. I lost my temper. I know I did. This was my kid's party though. I said some nasty things to her. I told her that Connor isn't a baby anymore and he's not special and she's raising a self-centered brat who will grow up to be a self-centered adult. She left the party and then my parents called. They said they understood my frustrations and everything about the situation. Then they said they still feel like I should apologize to my sister. Why? Because I have two healthy kids while she lost one and she's still having to deal with it? I told them no. My sister should apologize for how her son acted at the party. My husband and the guests who were at the party are on my side. My sister hasn't really spoken to me in a few days. Just posted passive aggressive things on social media which I just blocked. So am I wrong here? Am I wrong for telling my husband I'll use my maiden name for our baby if he misses the birth? So I am 37 weeks pregnant. Due to several health complications during my pregnancy, I've been told multiple times by multiple doctors that I might have to give birth next week as opposed to two weeks from now. Furthermore, that I may actually go into labor this weekend or any time leading up to it. Due to these same health complications, I'm having a c-section and my doctors do not want me laboring. So, should I go into labor, they are most likely pushing me through as an emergency c-section. My husband knows all of this. However, he is holding on to the 2% chance they gave him that the baby could last the two weeks. His sister is also pregnant, four weeks behind me, and her baby shower is this weekend. It will be over an hour away and that's without traffic. So weeks ago, I declined for both of us because it didn't seem like a good idea. Well, despite having a long conversation, the shower, which is two days away, has come up again. It turned into a fight as there are multiple reasons that should I go into labor, it's just a bad situation for him to be that far away. My husband wants to go and support his sister and see his family and says I'm keeping him on a short leash for something that probably isn't going to happen. I told him maybe he's right and nothing happens, but said should he choose to go and choose to take that risk that should I go into labor, he would most likely miss the birth or be extremely late. And if he makes that choice, then I would give the baby my last name versus his family name. My husband says I'm being an asshole for keeping him hostage and I'm always planning for worst case and that my thoughts are going to trigger labor more than anything. I said if he chooses not to be a part of this, should I go into labor, why should the baby bear his name when he would fail on his duty as a father? He has been silent in moody sense, only talking when absolutely necessary and saying that I'm trying to take everything from him. So it got me thinking, am I wrong? Am I wrong for rehoming my cat? So when I was 9, my parents received a 5-year-old cat from our local animal shelter. I agreed to getting the cat since I was 9 at the time and of course I wasn't going to turn down the opportunity to getting a fluffy animal. However, I'd be lying if I said I loved the cat growing up. 
I didn't hate the cat by any means, but I came to realize that I'm definitely more of a dog person. However, we never owned any animals apart from the cat since my dad has a fear of dogs for some reason. Last year, I moved in with my boyfriend and I took the cat with me since my parents thought that the cat had bonded with me more. I was fine with this since the cat does its own thing. However, problems began to arose when me and my boyfriend got a French bulldog puppy since neither of us had been able to get a dog up until now. The Frenchie was very gentle towards our cat and doesn't bother her. The cat, on the other hand, made her disdain for him very apparent. This was done through hissing, loudly shrieking, etc. This went on for a year with the cat's behavior towards our dog gradually getting worse. I lived two hours away from my parents, so taking the cat back to them wasn't really a viable option. After making all the efforts I could to get my cat to get along with my dog, albeit to no avail, I decided to take my cat to the local animal shelter since cats tend to be easily adoptable when compared to dogs. My parents recently came to visit. While they were here, they asked me where the cat was, to which I told them I had taken it to the local animal shelter. A huge argument ensued, despite the fact that I reassured them that the cat had been adopted since it was no longer on the shelter's website. My parents left shortly after and we haven't spoken since. My boyfriend has sided with me on this, saying that had we taken our Frenchie to the shelter, there's a good chance it may have been euthanized due to the overabundance of dogs in shelters. So am I wrong here? Am I wrong for wanting a painting made by my late sister in my house even though it triggers my husband, who's her widower? I, 34 female, had one sibling who was 25 when she passed. She died in a car crash just three months after her wedding. It has now been 12 years since her passing. We were very close and more like best friends and then sisters. My now husband, 38 male, Adam, was a constant presence in my family's lives even after her death as he would visit my parents regularly and they dote on him very much. Five years ago, we started getting close and got married two years later. My sister used paint as a hobby and had left behind eight paintings. My parents took two for themselves, I took three, and my parents gave away the rest to her close friends and they offered Adam to take any he wanted but he refused. I really liked the three paintings and displayed them in my apartment proudly before getting together with Adam as I felt closer to my sister but once we became a thing, the paintings seemed to upset him so I kept them in a storage instead. I understand everyone grieves differently and for Adam, anything associated with her triggers him and he goes back to that awful day when he found out she was gone. We have no pictures of her at our house or any memento left by her. All this time I've been understanding but I feel like I've completely erased her from my life and brought up the subject of displaying one painting to commemorate her in our house the other day. Adam shut the idea down immediately and refused to even hear my sign. I was hurt by this as I've been considerate to him all these years but he didn't even think to consider my feelings about the situation. It worsened when I suggested grief counseling together today which made him even more upset. He wasn't yelling but he was clearly distraught by me continuing the subject. He said he already went through grief counseling and my insistence is just opening old wounds. I was angry at the time and told him why did he ever consider marrying me when the thought of her makes him this upset and knowing how much she meant to me. He told me he can't handle me or this conversation anymore and went to his brothers to cool off as he doesn't want to say anything he'll regret later. Now all alone I'm thinking I might have taken things too far. So am I wrong here? Ew, like that's so weird. Am I the only one who thinks that's like nasty? Like, eh, eh. Yes, you're wrong. You're wrong. Am I wrong for telling my sister that she should have aborted my niece when she had the chance? I grew up in a single parent household with my mother and my half sister Casey who is 7 years younger than me. My mother struggled with drug abuse for the majority of her life and as a result I have no clue who my father is. Casey's father was also heavily into drugs and only stuck around for 3 years. I basically raised Casey because when my mom wasn't at work she was either gone for days on end holed up in her bedroom slash bathroom doing drugs with whoever her boyfriend was at the time. I am now 31 and have no desire to have children after spending much of my youth caring for Casey. Casey unfortunately followed in my mother's footsteps and that she began excessively drinking, smoking, partying, etc. She enrolled in a university that's known for being a party school but dropped out during her first year after getting pregnant with my niece. 14 weeks into Casey's pregnancy, we learned that the baby would likely be born with intellectual and physical disabilities. I am pro-choice and discuss abortion as an option with Casey who at the time refused and assured me that she would love her baby no matter what disability she was born with. My niece is now 4 years old and is non-verbal with pretty severe cognitive delays and motor slash sensory issues. My mother has been sober for about 5 years and has since come around to help out Casey with my niece. She feels bad about our poor upbringing and as a result enables Casey to continue partying and being an irresponsible parent. Casey is hardly ever around while my mother is left alone with my niece. She's pretty much become my niece's 24-7 caretaker. Both my mom and sister have asked that I help babysit from time to time, but I politely declined because I know nothing about caring for special needs children. Recently I learned that my mother is planning to move a few states away as her boyfriend would like to be closer to his family, meaning she will no longer be able to 
help take care of my niece. Now Casey has asked that I become my niece's godmother and that I move back to our hometown and in with her to help out. I declined because I know that what she really means is that she would like me to become my niece's primary caretaker. She then asked for me to compromise by having me pay for a home caretaker and for assisted living for when my niece turns 18. Again, I refused. My husband and I both have well-paying jobs, so technically we could afford it, but I'm sick of everyone rewarding Casey for her poor choices. This resulted in a screaming match between her and I, where in the heat of the moment, I told Casey that she should have gotten an abortion if she knew she was unwilling to step up and be a mother to a child with special needs. Now I am receiving daily texts from both her and my mother stating how terrible of a person I am and that if I truly cared about our family that I would help out. So am I wrong here? Call CPS. That's my two cents. CPS. Am I wrong for telling a man he was too old to have a toddler? I, 51 female, recently went on a date with a 54-year-old male. I knew he had two kids, but while we were eating, he tells me their ages, 32 female and 3-year-old male. That's a deal breaker to me. At my age with grown kids, 25 and 26, the last thing I want to be bothered with is a man with a toddler and all the potential drama. The mom is 30. I went on with the date because I was having fun. When it was over, I had every intention of letting things just fade away. Yes, I can be passive aggressive. Well, he called a couple of days later wanting to go out again. I tried the whole I'm not ready thing, but he kept trying. Finally, I told him that the fact that he has a toddler is a deal breaker. Too much possible drama and I'm way too old for that. Hint, hint. He told me I was being hypocritical since I was a single mom. I said a single mom of two grown kids. He kept repeating himself and I kept repeating myself. Finally, I told him that having a baby at 51 shows a stunning lack of judgment that I don't need in my world. He was quiet for a minute, told me that was a messed up thing to say. He told me I should have told him that before he paid for my dinner and that it was a B move then hung up. So am I wrong here? He just butt hurt because he called him out because he was being an irresponsible adult and having a baby at 51. Am I wrong for sending the police to my stepsister's wedding? I, 32 female, lost my mom when I was 23. It was by far the most traumatic loss I experienced. It was unfair, untimely, and preventable. I got in therapy and was doing better, but I had issues with my dad's new wife and her daughter, who's 25 and just got married weeks ago. We do not have a close relationship, but we were cordial enough to sit at dinner tables. My stepsister treats me as a relative and was as much distant from me. But after my father got sick, we had to see each other a lot. I'm handling his care while stepmom works full time and stepsister doesn't do much, though she's always visiting when I moved in to help my dad. I brought with me all of my mom's belongings and my stepsister showed interest in my mom's necklace and asked if she could borrow it to wear it at her wedding. I refused and she tried every method to convince me and I had to put it in a place where I thought it'd be safe after my stepmother got involved. As the wedding approached, they both kept convincing me to let my stepsister have it. She bragged about affording a better one, but it was a matter of showing who's in control. I stood my ground and told them how serious I was, so they backed off. I didn't attend the wedding to stay with my dad. I remember wanting to change where I was hiding the necklace while the house was empty, but I found it was gone. After searching for hours, I called my stepmom and she said not to worry, my stepsister took it and will return it when the wedding is over, but it was clear that I won't see it till after the honeymoon since she and her daughter was staying at the hotel. I screamed at her to return it, but she argued about not wanting to leave the guests and the wedding already started. I told her I'd get it myself, but she forbid me from coming, saying she'd have to keep me out from wanting to make a scene. I called the police and explained to them what was happening. I informed them my stepsister intended to leave for her honeymoon with my property. The police were sent to where the wedding was being held, and they were able to retrieve the necklace from my stepsister. My stepmom returned home and kept shouting at me, calling me petty and crazy, to send the police to my stepsister's wedding, ruining it and humiliating them over a piece of jewelry. She was screaming at my sick dad, telling him to handle me after the stunt that I pulled at the wedding. I defended myself saying I only wanted an item that belonged to me that they took without my permission returned. She argued further that I could have waited to get it back but I chose to burn the bridge with my stepsister and said that she considers me dead after this. She said stuff I can't mention but here's all I can say it was a bad night. I might have overreacted by getting the police involved but I had no guarantee of getting the necklace back since I have experience with them in the past. So was I wrong here? It's simple if you don't want to get the police involved you don't steal people's property. So no, you're not wrong. Am I wrong for forcing my daughter to go to a party? I, 44 female, have three girls who I'll call May 21, Jessica 19, and Diana 16. Of course I'm biased, but all three of them are genuinely beautiful and charming. However, Diana isn't as social as her two big sisters. It's the classical teenage sitcom differences. Oh god, this is going south already. May and Jessica were social butterflies in high school. They had lots of friends and were very well known. Diana, on the other hand, has had the same five-person group of friends since middle school and spends most of their time playing video games, particularly League of Legends and Smash Bros. What are you trying to say? Are you trying to say something's wrong with people who play League of Legends? 
in general they are more on the geek side like i said a very cliche difference diana has had bad luck and thanks to lockdown she hasn't had the full high school experience her sisters had but she doesn't seem as affected as one would think on one hand it makes sense despite the worst part of the lockdown last year she pretty much played with her friends online quite often so i'm guessing she didn't feel as isolated as her sisters during this time but still it concerns me a little teenage years are a lot about being social and adventurous and even without this global situation she chooses to stay indoors Anyway, the problem is that Diana's high school is planning a Halloween dance this month since last year it was cancelled. I imagine she'd be excited for her first dance, but she just isn't, and yesterday she told us that the day of the dance, Friday the 29th, she and her friends plan to participate in a local League of Legends tournament. This made me angry. She literally has all the time in the world for video games, but a limited amount of high school events, and she's just ditching them for irrelevant video game tournaments. I usually try to be supportive of her hobbies, but this crossed the line, and I told her she couldn't go to the tournament, and if she didn't go to the dance, then she won't go out that day, nor play video games for the weekend like i said my girl is as beautiful as her sisters and i'm sure she wouldn't have a difficult time making friends she doesn't have anything to be insecure about when may and jessica had this dance they start prepping in september trying new styles finding the best costumes all of that i would drive them around to help them in any way possible to prepare i wouldn't call it a tradition but it's a moment that's also important for me oh i see why you all but heard about this after the argument, my husband told me I was being an a-hole, and if she didn't want to go, that was on her. But what if she regrets not going when she's older? She can always play video games, but time won't stop, and she won't be in high school much longer. Still, my husband is rarely this upfront, so I wanted to know, am I wrong here? Uh, you guys in the comments, attack! This woman deserves to be attacked. I am promoting bullying in this section. Actually, no, TikTok, no, I'm not promoting bullying, because in this video, we'll get, ah, taken down. But... Attack this lady. What? Am I wrong for refusing to give up my dream wedding dress even though it means my fiance's family won't attend? I'm in a lot of turmoil right now and it feels like everything is falling apart. I have never had a great relationship with my future mother-in-law. It isn't terrible, but I can sense that she doesn't like me. My fiance is very close to his family, so there has been some tension. I didn't invite my mother-in-law wedding dress shopping because our relationship was awkward, but I thought I'd show her a picture to make her feel included. My dress is a beautiful flowery beachy dress, but not technically a wedding dress and could be ordered in color. I bought it from a small local boutique that we both love. My mother-in-law said that I can't wear that dress because she bought the same one for her 50th birthday which is two weeks after my wedding. My mother-in-law does have the dress though in a mint green color. There is enough detailing that is still clearly the same dress. And she has the receipt to prove that she got it first. Lavish birthday parties are a thing in our circle, so I know she has invested serious time and money. I said that I'm still going to wear the dress, despite the fact I could easily return it with no loss, because I didn't do this out of malice and I love it. She said if she wears it two weeks after I do, everyone is going to think she is pathetic and copying her son's wife. I said sorry, but not really my problem. Everyone has gone crazy since I said that. His entire side of the family has backed out of the wedding, so like 15 people, and it will be noticeable. His sisters were supposed to be in the wedding party on his side but dropped out and have blocked him on everything. His stepdad won't talk to him and says he regrets raising him and he isn't a real man because a real man would stand up for his mom. My fiancé is hurting and found out his family had a big beach day and invited everyone but him. He called mother-in-law and they talked but didn't come to a resolution. She said if I refuse to do the right thing, the only answer is no one going to her party can go to the wedding. He is now mad at me saying that my mother-in-law had the dress first. So, am I wrong here? I don't want to give up my dream wedding dress. Am I wrong for blowing up on my dad for asking me to pay for a family dinner? I, 27 male, lost my mom at 15 in a road accident. I was a fairly airheaded kid in school and was great academically. My dad, 48 male, remarried to Isabel 10 months later for my care. The two years after my mom's passing were extremely hard on me. Isabel was temperamental with me, sometimes nice or almost ignoring me. She had a son who was two years older. We practically had no relationship as he moved for college around the time they got married. When I was 17, I was going through old pictures. I ran into some domestic pictures of Isabel and my dad. I realized many of them were from Seattle. Only time my dad was there was when he had been working on site for weeks the year before my mom died. There had been a fight between my parents about the on-sites not bringing the family extra money. I realized that my dad was probably cheating on my mom with Isabel prior to her death. I don't know if my mom knew this, though I think so. I kept it quiet because Isabel was pregnant with my stepsister at this time. I found out later that year that my mom had left me as her sole inheritor, which was quite some money. Her parents' inheritance money and 50% of the house. This had helped me pay for college. My dad challenged this will, causing some delay in executing it. Some words were said about my mom, which I didn't like. My dad also had taken 6000 from my account. I let it go because I honestly was happy to have money for college. After moving out of state to college, I've been low contact with my dad. I had a court wedding due to COVID and have a seven month old now. Two weeks ago, I was in town and my dad decided to meet me and my family, which I agreed to. 
It was at a nicer restaurant in town, and along came Isabel, my stepsister, and Isabel's son, his girlfriend, and two kids. The dinner was good until Isabel brought the house up and mentioned my stepbrother's wife losing her job. I deflected this to a private chat with my dad. No fucking way am I giving it up. This made the conversation much more difficult. When the check came, my dad asked me to take care of the bill, and I refused, asking them to split it. I had no idea everyone was coming and had no contact with any of them prior to this. My dad started to bring up how I had a nest egg and my mom babied me. Suddenly, my stepbrother said, dude, just get it. You'll be fine. I kind of saw red at this moment and I told him to shut the fuck up and that my mom gave me the money because my dad was an adulterer. Isabel got in the middle and asked me not to talk to my dad like that and my wife tried to calm me down. I said I don't want anything to do with this family and to keep our relationship just between me and my dad. Anyways, more words were shared and I handed them the cash from my side and left. My wife said I shouldn't have acted like that but still had my side. So, was I wrong here for my reaction? Am I wrong for telling my sister-in-law no one cares that she's pregnant? See, this is one of those posts where it's like, duh, you're the asshole. But then when I read it, it's like, oh, never mind. Watch. Backstory. My cousin, 33 female, who I'll call Mary, lost her husband, 32 male, and two of her three children, three female and nine-month-old male, in a car accident last week. Her and her daughter, five, are as you would expect, and it's just heartbreaking. Well, today was a funeral, and my brother's wife announced her pregnancy the second they arrived at her house this morning, and we were like, okay, congratulations, but please keep it on the down low for today. Well, when we arrived at the church, she kept making gagging sounds and rubbing her stomach saying, I as a mom can't imagine what she's going through. They have no kids, so people would look at her and she'd tell them she was pregnant. Afterwards, at my aunt's house, my sister-in-law kept making everything about her. Like someone was in the bathroom and my sister-in-law would loudly say, pregnant lady needs to pee she literally told my cousin to give her her seat so the lady with the baby could rest her feet i ignored her until she came to mary stuck out her flat belly and said me and isaac just found out i was pregnant and honestly we are beside ourselves it could happen to us mary broke down crying i snapped who says that to a woman who just literally lost two babies i said loudly to my sister-in-law no one gives an f you're pregnant look around it's not just one but two babies funerals not to mention the love of mary's life like i knew you were an attention seeker but for fuck sake you took the test four days ago just leave good for you she did leave in tears and my brother called me a fat bitter bitch oh what the fuck uh-uh i've gotten phone calls from my brother and my sister-in-law's family calling me the world of names because i made a pregnant woman cry mary and my aunt thank me but if i'm being honest i feel bad about causing a scene so please put me in my place if i'm wrong her husband your brother should have pulled her aside and be like yo what the fuck are you doing shut the fuck up but if he don't do it you can do it so little update i found out this morning that my brother and my sister-in-law harassed my cousin with phone calls for her to talk to me about yesterday my aunt gave both of them an earful and then made my cousin turn off her phone my brother and my sister-in-law were at my parents house trying to get their side in when i arrived they both came at me screaming and yelling about my sister-in-law's feelings and she couldn't miscarry from the stress i caused her sister-in-law said if i didn't lose my attitude and apologize i'd never be in their child's life Oh, uh-uh, brother, step up. Step up, brother. I told her I didn't care, and if she was going to use the kid as a weapon, I didn't want to be in their life anyway. Things got heated, and my father ended up kicking out my brother and my sister-in-law. So yeah, all the trauma at a time, we should be there for one another. I'm so sorry you have to go through that, but you're, your sister-in-law's fucking psycho. Your brother's whipped too. I, 22 male, just learned that my sister, 29 female, had an abortion to be able to donate me part of her liver. It caused her divorce and I can't stop hating myself. I was very sick four years ago and was in need of a liver transplant. My situation was that it was very unlikely that I would get one in time. At that time, my sister was pregnant. I didn't know as it was early and she was only two months. My situation was getting worse and my sister decided to have an abortion and then two months later, we did the transplant surgery. Oh my god, what a nice sister. I never knew about the pregnancy. All I knew was that she gave me half of the liver. My sister and her husband divorced a year later. I didn't know the truth until yesterday when my mom slipped up about the abortion that my sister had. I asked her about it and she told me everything. She told me that my sister made her promise not to tell me and she failed that promise. My sister was very happy. My brother-in-law was a very decent guy. I knew they were looking forward to having children. They were great together. She always told us about how lucky she is to have found him. Apparently, at the time of their decision, my sister and her husband had great decisions agreement he didn't want her to have the abortion and risk the transplant surgery and was hopeful that my situation might sort itself out without my sister's help the chance was very small but it was there my sister didn't agree they couldn't convince one another and my sister did things anyway without his blessing they tried working things out after the surgery they went to counseling they even tried to have another baby but they couldn't get themselves to do it he couldn't forgive my sister and she wasn't all that apologetic so they ended up separating and eventually divorcing i asked my mom if my sister still thinks that she did the right thing and she said she's not sure 
I can't stop feeling guilty. My sister saved my life but destroyed her own life by doing it. She had to abort the baby she definitely loved and looked forward to and did that knowing that it will probably end her marriage as well. I was ready to go at that time. I had accepted my fate and I was at peace. She should have just let me. My brother-in-law should have told me so I would have talked her out of it. I'm surprised he didn't and I can't feel anything but hate for myself. I don't know what to do. Should I talk to my sister? What should I tell her? Should I keep my mouth shut and pretend that I don't know? I'm not sure if I'll ever be able to look into her eyes and not show that I know. I just don't know what to do. Please, please help me. Am I the asshole for giving my son the same name as an ex and not telling my husband? Absolutely. I haven't even read the story yet, but I'm already saying asshole, asshole, asshole. You can't do stuff like that. Why? Like that's shady. That's that's shady because if the roles were reversed, if a guy named a daughter an ex's name, you'd be livid. Let's not lie. So I'm 32 female and my husband is also my age. We met in grad school nine years ago, got married five years ago and have a three-year-old son, Isaiah. His name isn't Isaiah, but something like it. Similar and traditional without being overly common for boys in North America. It was recently homecoming weekend and my 10-year reunion for my undergrad. My husband knows that I had one serious relationship in undergrad. It lasted two years with someone named Ben. My relationship with Isaiah was not as serious as it was with Ben. And since I lived away from home, I never introduced my family to Isaiah. What he doesn't know is that I also dated Isaiah for six months after. I never told him because I liked that name as a baby name. I didn't want to concern them with the new relationship either as I didn't enjoy having to announce my breakup with Ben to the whole family. So we're in my college town for the weekend and out to dinner. Isaiah walks in with some of his old friends and immediately comes up to us and introduces himself to my husband. Since his name isn't super common, I see my husband almost say, you have the same name as our son, but he stops himself and I can tell his brain is connecting the dots. Ooh, you got busted. <laughs> Mm, look at that Morphe highlighter. Mm. We leave the restaurant and when we're getting ready for bed, he confronts me about Isaiah. I admit to it. I apologize and stress that it wasn't a serious relationship. We were both graduating and didn't want to stay together. I don't think of adult Isaiah when I see our son either. Doesn't matter, fam. It's wrong. Wrong. My husband says that if we have a daughter, he wants to name her after one of his exes during the fight. This makes me feel like shit and I realize I may have been the asshole. So can you guys tell me, am I the asshole here? Yes, uh, God. Like, so here's the thing. It's worse when you hide it and then they find out later, right? You know how people like to say it's easier to ask, it's easier to ask for forgiveness than it is for permission. That's not in all situations. Because here, if you had described to him, like, hey, I love this name. Actually, wait, I kind of understand both because like, what if you never saw Isaiah ever get in your life? And you're like, fuck it. I really like this name and I have no connection to him. I could. Oh, have I not been wearing two earrings this whole time? Malala. It doesn't matter because you only see this side anyway. Um, Yeah, you just got to discuss these things. You say, hey, by the way, this was an ex's name, but I have zero attachment to him. I don't like him at all. I just really love the name. What do you think? And if he doesn't like it, then you have to respect it. You were deceptive. Am I wrong for telling a social worker the real reason my sister wants a foster kid? I, 28 female, have a sister who's 36. For the sake of the story, I'll just call her Jane. Jane is married to Bob and they have two kids, boy and a girl. My niece and nephew are wonderful kids and no trouble at all. They fight as siblings do, but nothing big. I love them. Now for about two years, I did live with my sister. It was a miserable time that really affected our relationship. She saw me as free labor, money, and babysitting. Even when I managed to get a small part-time job, she demanded I hand over nearly half my pay or get out. It was hell as she took complete advantage of me. I moved out as soon as I could and we have little to no contact outside of family gatherings. Now, after I moved out, she started complaining how she has no help with the kids and never gets a break. I babysit sometimes, but I have made it clear just because I'm off work doesn't mean I want an eight-hour day with my niece and nephew. Anyway, she started talking about how she wanted to foster a kid. Not a kid, but a teenager. I pressed her for more info on this, and she said she wants to adopt a teenager so she has a live-in babysitter for her kids. This is her logic. I want a kid around 16 or 17, you know, someone who may have been in the system for a while. They can share a bedroom with your nephew. She only has a three-bedroom house or sleep in the garage. They can help me with housework, chores, cook, and help me with my business. She bakes and sells cookies on the side. Also, babysit the kids so me and Bob can go out sometimes or have some time alone. They'll be so grateful for a home and won't complain. I won't have to pay them at all. And when they turn 18, I can just sign up for another foster kid. A teenager will be so much easier than a little kid and they will be grateful just to have a roof, food, siblings if they have been separated from their real ones and clothes. What the hell? How do people think of this shit? What? What am I reading? 
I was horrified and told her it was a horrible idea, but she didn't listen to me. She went on with it anyways. About a month ago, a social worker showed up at my apartment to ask me some questions about my sister. She had put me down as a character witness or something like that. I immediately told the social worker why my sister wanted to foster a kid and how she treated me when I lived with her. The lady then thanked me. My sister called crying saying that she wouldn't be considered for any adoptions or fosters. The social worker told her that they felt her home and her weren't a good fit. She asked if I said anything and I told the truth. She went off on me, hung up, and we haven't spoken since. A couple family members are on her side. They think foster kids are effing dogs or something and would be so happy just to have a roof and would gladly do all the housework. So am I wrong here? What? What? Ugh. Don't have kids if you can't take care of them. Like, it's not, you don't have to have kids if you have, why, what? Ugh. 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 People are fucking stupid. Am I wrong for rejecting someone's request to propose at my wedding? My husband and I got married last month and had a small and wonderful wedding. Two weeks before the wedding, my best friend slash maid of honor's boyfriend asked if it would be okay to propose during my reception. I first told him how thrilled I was that he was going to propose to my best friend and how excited she would be, but I really wasn't comfortable with him proposing during the wedding, at least as a public thing. He seemed totally shocked that I said no, which I can understand. He said that weddings are supposed to be about celebrating love and that as her best friend, I should want them to finally be engaged after 11 years together. I absolutely want that for them, but I just didn't understand why it needed to happen during the five and a half hour window of my ceremony slash cocktail hour slash reception. I was very apologetic and offered to help however I could with the proposal on any other day, but he was very clearly not happy with me. I haven't heard from my maid of honor since the wedding, which is probably the longest we've ever gone without talking. I had tried several times to get in touch with her and let her know at one point that I had something of hers she had lost at the wedding. Never got a response. I texted the other day saying I was going to drop the lost item off at her house so she'd have it and she finally responded. Apparently, during the after party at the hotel bar, my maid of honor's boyfriend got very drunk and told her that she would have been engaged that night if I hadn't ruined his plan. She says she isn't exactly mad at me, but she feels like her future engagement is ruined and that I denied her a chance at happiness. Whoa, whoa, what? <sighs> okay. Another mutual friend who knows what's going on says she doesn't... Another mutual friend who... Another mutual friend who knows what's going on says she doesn't love that he planned to propose at the wedding, but thinks I was the asshole ultimately for saying no. Oh, uh, no, hell no. What the F? Get out of here trying to propose at my wedding. It's fine. If people say yes to it, more power to you. But if I say no, I might. What? The entitlement of some people. Get the hell out of here. Am I wrong for not wanting to get my girlfriend an expensive engagement ring? I, 26 male, have been with my girlfriend, 26 female, for four years, and we've recently been talking more and more about marriage. Although my girlfriend grew up relatively well off, for the time I've known her, she's been pretty low maintenance. She's never cared about designer brands, rarely buys new clothes, and the jewelry she owns was gifted to her. I have a decent job and make up to 80000 a year, and I've been saving for a while, but growing up, my family didn't have a lot of money. My girlfriend and I have always seemed to be on the same page when it comes to saving money. I assumed she would be fine with a more affordable ring. When I started looking into rings, I discovered moissanite rings, which look similar to diamond rings but are much more affordable i see where this is going i was looking at rings in the 1500 to 1800 range this girl wants a real diamond when i mentioned this to her she insisted she wanted a real diamond ring and sent me links to a bunch of diamond rings that she liked their prices range from 6500 to ten thousand dollars i told her i wasn't willing to spend that much she seemed genuinely mad and said it wasn't that expensive we got into a pretty big argument over it i told her that it was ridiculous to ask me to spend that much and that i thought she was more reasonable than that she said i was being cheap and that i could afford it and that i was basically saying she wasn't worth it i told her no one is worth a ten thousand dollar ring <sighs> I get you, but you can't. <laughs> Eventually, my girlfriend said she didn't care and that I should get whatever ring I want, but she's clearly still mad and I know this is going to be an ongoing argument. I'm a bit frustrated because this seems out of left field. I've always known marriage is super important to her, but I didn't realize she'd insist on a diamond ring. So I talked to my older sister about it, who despite agreeing diamond rings were stupidly priced, sided with my girlfriend and said if I could afford it, she didn't see the big deal. She added that my girlfriend has done so much for me and I was being an asshole about this. What my sister means by my girlfriend doing so much for me is that she was really supportive when I was in a serious car accident four years ago. I broke multiple bones and required a few surgeries. Although where I live, most healthcare is covered, I was unable to work for a while and had expenses I wasn't able to pay. I had been dating my girlfriend for only six months at the time and she was really there for me. 
I couldn't pay my rent, so she let me move in with her for free and help pay for a few expenses and for physical therapy I needed. She also helped me get a job with her uncle, who was a VP of an insurance company. Obviously, I've thanked her for all she did for me, but it's not something we talk about much. I don't think I'm obligated to buy an expensive ring because she helped me out a few years ago. But if my own sister said this, I'm guessing my girlfriend must feel this way as well. So am I the asshole here? I agree with you in a sense where rings should not be, rings are a scam, it's a waste of money, but you love her and this is something that she wants. Oh, I'm conflicted. I don't know. I see both sides, but ah, ah. What it makes you happy? I don't know. Don't listen to me. I just tell the stories. Am I the asshole for refusing to return the $600 gift I bought my mom for Christmas? To start, I want to mention that unlike my wife, I have a very good relationship with my mom. And because my siblings can always afford pricey gifts for my mom, this year I decided to gift her something nice and expensive for once on Christmas. Though I'm currently unemployed, but I worked for the past few months and my wife and I have a joint account. I already know this is gonna go down. You taking money from the joint account to buy your mom a gift that you cannot afford? Okay, the problem began when my wife found out that I purchased a $600 necklace for my mom to gift her on Christmas using our joint account. She went off on me saying I should have told her and I shouldn't have taken the money from our joint account that she uses to pay the bills and rent, especially now that we're struggling. Dumbass, like what? I asked why should I tell her since it's for both of us, but she reminded me that despite that being true, one, I no longer work, and two, 600 is a lot, and I should have consulted her, but the reasons I didn't are, one, I feel that it's my money too, and I can make purchases using our joint account, and two, I know if I told my wife, she refused to let me buy the gift solely because she hates my mom. She yelled at me saying that it is her hard-earned money I threw away and needed to return the necklace, but I refused because mom already knows about it. She responded that this is no longer our joint account since I no longer earn money and that if I want to give mom expensive items, then need to earn money myself. She insisted I return it, but I said no and it escalated to me calling her bitter and controlling after she pointed out I never got her anything in this price range. She's insisting I return it and at least get a cheaper one, but I'm done being the one with the least expensive slash valuable gifts to gift in the family. She's making this her hill to die on. So, am I the asshole? Yes, you dumb piece of shit. What is wrong with you? This looks like he has a problem with himself because everyone else can afford getting their mom nice gifts and he feels like he's at the bottom of the totem pole because he can't do that. That sounds like a you problem. Go get a job. You think I would want a gift from someone who doesn't have a job and I see like, oh shit, my son is jobless and he bought me a $600 necklace. I don't want that. Go pay your bills. You have a wife, you have family. As a mom would not want her kid to spend that kind of money that they don't have. Men are fucking stupid sometimes. Asshole. Asshole, asshole, asshole. Am I wrong for naming my cat something my sister was going to name her daughter? Ugh, again with the names, man. This always causes rift between people. Sister, Alice, 29 female, had some fertility issues. She eventually got pregnant a few years ago. Alice wanted the gender of the baby to be a surprise so she wouldn't know until he was born. She ended up picking out two names. One if it was a boy and one if it was a girl. She ended up having a boy. When she was talking... <laughs> I can see. When she was talking about girl names, she floated the idea Sandra, and her nickname could be Sandy. She did not end up using the name, and it wasn't even their pick for the name if it was a girl. It was their second or third choice. Anyway, fast forward to last week, I found and rescued an orange cat. After I knew she wasn't lost, I decided that I would keep her. I was trying to think of names that would work, and one of my friends suggested Sandy. This friend did not know that my sister had brought up the name Sandy for her child. I loved the name and decided that was what I was going to be naming her. When I told my parents and sister about this my sister got kind of quiet and asked if i could change it she said that sandy was what she wanted to name her daughter if she had one i honestly did not know she was trying to have another child and did not even make the connection or remember she also liked the name she said that i should change it and would be an asshole for stealing her name i really like the name sandy for this cat so would i be the asshole if i didn't change it here's the thing right you gotta pick and choose your battles if you care about your relationship with your sister which i assume you do you change it it's just the name right it, it's I mean, the cat won't give two shits if you name it Sandy, Patrick, or SpongeBob, you know? So, that's the thing. But you, I don't know. Why do people make such big deals about this? I think you would be the asshole, sorry. Am I wrong for breaking my promise to my husband and letting others meet our newborn before him? Mmm, this is already giving me red flag vibes. This is giving me manipulator vibes, but let's let's keep going. I, 25 female, moved away from my hometown to my husband's hometown, male 32, after we got married. The main reason is because he suffers from a medical chronic condition and needs to be near his family. Oh, red flag number two. I was pregnant with our first baby and was nearing my due date when my husband had to travel out of town for two weeks. Because of this, he couldn't be with me in the delivery room, which wasn't expected. I wanted to ask my mom to come with me, but he assured me that his family is there to help and I shouldn't be worried. 
Red flag number three. He then made me promise that I don't let anyone see our son for the first time in person before him besides his stepmom who was supposed to be there for me and I agreed. Oh my god, what what red flag are we on? I lost count. His stepmom was with me when I went into labor, but she stayed away since she is the type that doesn't get too involved and keeps her distance. She's also the I don't do diapers type, meaning she doesn't offer help with the baby and I shouldn't be expecting it. She dropped me and my son off at home and asked that I only call if there's an emergency. I felt helpless. I asked my neighbor for a few favors but needed real help with the baby, so I called my mom and asked if she could come help me with the baby. She drove four hours to come stay with me. She helped out tremendously and I'm so grateful for that. My husband stayed away for a few more days then came home once he saw my mom he got so upset repeatedly saying i broke the promise that i made to him by not letting others meet our son before him i tried to explain that i needed the help and he brought up his stepmom but i replied that she dropped me off and left that's it he said it wasn't about mom since it could have been anybody else but it was about me disrespecting his wishes and breaking the promise i made Oh, what the? Let me let me zoom in. Let me zoom in for this shit. He reminded me that he's also the parent and he gets to say too. At this point, I said he was overreacting, but he replied that I forever tainted the memory of his son's birth and broke his trust and proved to him that my word is worth shit now. What red flag were we on? Someone remind me. Mom tried to give us space, but I said she did nothing wrong. She came to help after his stepmom left, so I can't be blamed for asking for help. He told me to stop giving him excuses and admit I wronged him with what I did and then started avoiding me and just kept focusing his attention on our son. He keeps acting cold towards me, calling me a selfish promise breaker and expecting me to make it up to him. He wanted an apology, but I haven't given him that yet. So am I wrong here? Holy shit. Uh, the only answer to this is divorce nothing else run away this is not the man for you no one no one deserves to be talked to like that especially after you pushed out his baby and he wasn't even motherfucking there Am I wrong for refusing to walk my daughter down the aisle? My daughter, 26 female, and I haven't spoken in years. When she was 15, we found out that she wasn't my biological daughter and my wife had cheated on me years ago with a friend. As it turns out, the so-called friend was suddenly interested in playing dad. My wife and I divorced, my daughter learned the truth, and I told her I still loved her no matter what. Of course, she was interested now in getting to know her biological father, and while it hurt, I tried to accept that. She started pulling away from me after that. Even when trying to still do things together as a family, she was no longer interested. The last straw was when she was 20 and living at my house. We were arguing because she had dropped from her college courses, hasn't done anything for three months, and was mad because I told her she either needed to go to school or work if she wants to stay here for free. She told me I'm just, oh, I can't even read it. So, so mean. She told me I'm not her real dad, so stop pretending like I am and she'll just go to stay with her real father. Ugh. Ugh. That broke me, honestly. But I told her if that's how she really feels, then there's really nothing left to say between us. And she did move out to go live with him. I was depressed for a very long time and I drank a lot. My son, 24 male, was my only reason to keep moving forward. For the first couple of years, I reached out to my daughter. She wanted no contact and I learned to accept that and moved on. It helped me find more peace in my life. My son stopped talking to her for a while over this and was angry with her. They still chat sometimes, which doesn't bother me at all. Through him, I learned her biological father died in October 2019. She reached out to me first, saying she knows that we haven't talked in a while, but wants to ask me if I'd be willing to walk her down the aisle. After a pretty long message about how much she hurt me in the past with her actions, I told her no. She didn't want me to be her father anymore, so I learned to no longer view her as my daughter. This turned into a fight between us because according to her, it's not her fault she wanted to know her real dad. And I agreed with her it's not, but what was her fault was how she treated me ever since. In my mind, I know if he hadn't passed, we wouldn't even be speaking right now. It ended with telling her I hope she enjoys her wedding, but I want no part of her life. My son told me she's ranting to my family that I'm ruining her day and she thought parents are supposed to love their kids unconditionally. Oh, what a gaslighting bitch. Fuck her. Oh, I can't be swearing so much. Sorry. My brother seems to think that now I am being an asshole and that this is my chance to be in her life again, but I have no interest in that. Still seems that everyone has a strong opinion on it and that I'm making it difficult for my daughter to have the wedding she wants when it would mean a lot to her. My son is on my side, but the comments are still wearing me down and just for the sake of my sanity, am I being an asshole? Am I the asshole? For refusing to let someone order an item off of the menu. I'm a waitress and I have a semi-regular family that comes in every once in a while. Every time they come in, they order their youngest child macaroni and cheese. Ugh. 
They're the asshole for Wait, sure. The first time I served them, the child threw up all over the booth. I didn't think much of it, just that he was sick or had an upset stomach. The next time was the same thing. Mac and cheese, then puke. This is an every time occurrence. The kid orders mac and cheese, then throws up. The kid never gets to the bathroom, and most of the time he doesn't even make an attempt to leave the table. I believe once he started walking to the bathroom, but that's it. The most recent time <sighs> they came in, the child went to order mac and cheese again, and I asked the mom, is he, sure okay? About that? Is he okay to have that? He gets sick every time. The mom said, oh yeah, Kraft mac and cheese makes him sick, but he wants it. I said, ma'am, I'm sorry, but I don't think your child should order this if you know he's going to puke from eating. And quite frankly, I really don't want to have to clean up vomit tonight. The mom threw a bit of a fit and the manager had to come over and was agreeing with me. Was I in the wrong for not wanting slash allowing him to order the mac and cheese that makes him sick? Am I the asshole for emasculating my fiancé in front of his family? My fiancé and I have been together for about six years, engaged for two. After we got engaged, we sat down and had the deal breakers talk. Basically, things in our lives or hypothetical situations that leave little room for compromise. One of the things on my list was no prenup. I'm not here to debate with anyone about their use. I just think that if you're preparing for divorce before even getting married, it's a sign that you're probably marrying the wrong person. He agreed and everything was fine. Lately, his family, particularly his mother, keeps on bringing up signing up a prenup. Prenups are only for rich people. I've told her no many times. Said this is an issue between us and we will discuss it privately and make our own decisions as a couple. He tells her no, although more weakly. Sensing a theme here. <laughs> well, last night we went there for dinner and she brought out an actual prenup drafted by her lawyer. She put it in front of me after dinner and told me to sign. Obviously, I didn't even read it, let alone sign it. She called me a gold digger. No one, including my fiance, stood up for me, so I stood up for myself. I told her that there is no gold to dig here. I make four times as much as he makes. I have my own house, ample savings, and will certainly inherit more from my parents than he will from his. They have six kids in her middle class. Trash <laughs> is what you meant. Middle trash. <laughs> <laughs> what is she worried about? That shut her up real quick, especially when my... My sister-in-law then said, if anything, he's the gold digger here. My fiance is now angry with me. He said it was emasculating for his family to know I'm so much more successful than him <laughs> and his brothers are making jokes and changed his contact info to gold digger. Personally, I don't think I was rude or out of line, but he thinks I was an asshole and could have handled it better. Am I the asshole here? No. no this dude sucks. Am I the asshole by cooking in a vomit pot? This past weekend, I hosted a vaccine party for my group of friends. I promised to make them my famous chunky chicken stew, which is always a hit. And then I decided decided to tell them that this was made in my family's vomit pot. Everyone uses something to throw up in, right? For some reason, my family uses a cooking pot. How frequently are they puking that you need to have a designated pot? <laughs> I thought it'd be a funny thing to tell them and certainly did not foresee the reaction it gained. First, there is puzzlement. What did I mean by vomit pot? I mentioned my son used it for a night of throwing up not even two weeks ago. Mm. As they saw I was serious, <laughs> there was a growing revulsion and anger. I told him that it was already washed thoroughly. My best friend's wife left hurriedly for the bathroom. I told him that if it was so gross, then why did they slurp my stew down? Mind you, this pot is absolutely clean and sterile. I wash it thoroughly after every vomit use. Was I an asshole by cooking in the pot? Am I the asshole for refusing to serve alcohol to a very pregnant woman? I know she's going to do it outside of my bar, but I don't want any part of it. No, you're not the asshole. Listen, guy. Don't serve that lady alcohol. Nope. You are legally responsible. I don't want to for set that, the precedent so. that we need to give actual advice, but don't. Yeah, no. <laughs> Definitely don't do that. Mm -mm. Unless she really wants it. If she's like, she's gonna tip for it, then like, <laughs> Jesus, no. I guess you gotta. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> <laughs> but if she's gonna tip good, oh, she, all right, maybe it's worth it. You're gonna then. give you the good tip. Yeah. She's gonna let you get the tip. You guys stop. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't give pregnant women alcohol. Am I the asshole for being frustrated that my girlfriend doesn't work hard at her job and gets paid nearly twice as much as I do? My girlfriend and I both work in tech. When we both worked in different offices, I didn't know much about her day-to-day -day life at work. I knew she made a lot more than me, 120000 compared to my 66000 But since we've been working from home, I've seen a lot of her daily schedule, and her versus mine are very different. She gets up around 9.15 to drag herself into the home office for her 9.30 to 10 o'clock meeting. After the meeting, she goes and showers, has breakfast, and from about 10 to 10.45, answering just a few Slack messages and emails on her phone, but mostly just listening to podcasts and eating and doing her morning routine. I wonder if she listens to the Judgies podcast. If you're Oops. listening to this, you should listen to the Judgies podcast. If you're listening to this, <laughs> tell your girlfriend to listen to the Judgies podcast. 
Am I the asshole for being frustrated that my girlfriend doesn't work hard at her job? She'll work till noon and takes a lunch break from noon till one. And she works from one to four, often having meetings or working on her own stuff. And at four, we'll spend an hour or so doing household chores and stuff. I, on the other hand, basically work nonstop from 8.30 to five or maybe even six, working eight and a half hours, nine and a half hours a day. And a few weeks ago, I kind of got frustrated with her for basically hardly doing anything for her job if she was spending half the day just slacking. She got frustrated with me and said that they hired her for her knowledge and it wasn't my place to say what her time was worth. Correct. And that if her boss and CEO saw the work she produced, that it wasn't my place to undervalue her because I was being jealous. I said that she was being a little privileged. Not a lot of people can just choose to make six figures and wander off from work for practically half the day. Am I the asshole for being frustrated that my girlfriend doesn't work hard at her job and gets paid nearly twice as much as I do? My girlfriend and I both work in tech. When we both worked in different offices, I didn't know much about her day-to-day -day life at work. I knew she made a lot more than me, 120000 compared to my 66000 But since we've been working from home, I've seen a lot of her daily schedule, and her versus mine are very different. Different. She gets up around 9.15 to drag herself into the home office for her 9.30 to 10 o'clock meeting. After the meeting, she goes and showers, has breakfast, and from about 10 to 10.45, answering just a few Slack messages and emails on her phone, but mostly just listening to podcasts and eating and doing her morning routine. I wonder if she listens to the Judgies podcast. If you're listening to this, you should listen to the Judgies podcast. If you're listening to this, <laughs> tell your girlfriend to listen to the Judgies podcast. Am I the asshole for being frustrated that my girlfriend doesn't work hard at her job? She'll work till noon and takes a lunch break from noon till one. And she works from one to four, often having meetings or working on her own stuff. And at four, we'll spend an hour or so doing household chores and stuff. I, on the other hand, basically work nonstop from 8.30 to five or maybe even six, working eight and a half hours, nine and a half hours a day. And a few weeks ago, I kind of got frustrated with her for basically hardly doing anything for her job if she was spending half the day just slacking. She got frustrated with me and said that they hired her for her knowledge and it wasn't my place to say what her time was worth. Correct. And that if her boss and CEO saw the work she produced, that it wasn't my place to undervalue her because I was being jealous. I said that she was being a little privileged. Not a lot of people can just choose to make six figures and wander off from work for practically half the day. Story time on how me and my dad walk into my mom sleeping with my brother. Yes, his and hers biological son. She actually took his virginity away, child. All right, let me set the scene for y'all. I was 18 at the time and my brother was 16. My parents were together, so we lived with both parents. Me and my brother went to the same school, but I was in a girls basketball team, so I would always stay after school and he would take the bus home. And my mom would be home by the time my brother got home. Three to four hours by the time my basketball practice was over, my dad would be getting off of work so he would pick me up and we would go home together. So that was basically our routine as a family. But one day this routine changed because I sprained my ankle. I called my dad and he immediately left work to come and get me. My ankle wasn't too bad, but my coach wanted to send me home to be on the safe side to make sure I heal. Well, that night changed me and my dad's lives forever once we opened that door. Like for part two. Part two on how me and my dad walked into my mom sleeping with my brother. So like I said, this day I sprained my ankle, so my dad left his job early and picked me up. And again, my ankle wasn't too bad, but my coach wanted to send me home just so I can heal and not make it worse by putting pressure on it. Regardless, once me and my dad got home, everything changed. Once we walked into the house, we immediately heard uh, weird sounds. We looked at each other and confirmed that, yeah, that... That's definitely moaning. My dad immediately thought my mom was cheating, but we just didn't know with who. The moaning was coming from my parents' room, which was just, why? At least have respect for the bed. Anywho, I limped my way over to the door with my dad. My dad opened up the door, and my mom was on top of my brother, literally riding that pony. And the war began. Like for part three. Part three on how me and my dad walked into my mom sleeping with my brother. So like I said, my dad opened up the door and my mom was on top of my brother riding that pony. It was disgusting. 
My jaws dropped. My mom jumped off covering herself and my brother sat up shaking. My dad went off. He went straight for my mom and grabbed her yelling, what the fuck are you doing in bed with our son? Not gonna lie, my dad was so angry he put his hands on my mom. My mom fell to the ground crying saying, I'm so sorry. Then my dad turned around and beat my brothers behind. My brother ran to the room and I'm just still standing there in shock. I grew a hatred for my mom that day. My dad started yelling at my mom saying how she's taking advantage of their son, how he's a minor and all she did was cry all of a sudden i don't know what came over me but i called my mom a stupid dirty whore and the war continued like for part four part four and how me and my dad walked in on my mom sleeping with my brother so like i said my mom was on the floor crying while my dad was yelling at her for taking advantage of their son and at the time i hated my mom so much i called her a few less than kind words and she had the audacity to get up and tell me not to speak to her that way i then called her the b word the FB word and the W word and it was on. She rushed at me trying to hit me but I ended up pushing her to the floor. Then she fell to the ground saying how could you put your hands on your mother and my dad responded how could you put that cat on your son. She walked into that one. Anywho let's fast forward to the legal things. That same night my dad called the cops on my mom and they came to our house and they of course arrested my mom. Like for part five to find out what was her charges and what happened to my brother. Part 5 on how me and my dad walked in on my mom sleeping with my brother. So like I said, my dad called the cops and they arrested my mom. She's facing over 3 years for statutory R and it's classified as a felony. My brother still lives with my dad and I but he has to go to therapy almost every day. And that's how we actually found out she took his V card away. Anyways, a year later, I'm still not the biggest fan of my brother, but we're okay. And I still haven't talked to my mom, and I'm happy about that. I just think she's weird and disgusting. Me and my dad are great, and he's happy with the new girl. A regular girl. <laughs> Story time on how my dad had a threesome with my brother and another man. Okay, so a quick rundown. My parents divorced when I was 13 and just a year after, my dad got with another man. So at the time, I was 14, my brother was 15, my mom was 34, my dad was 36, and his boyfriend was 30. Keep up with me guys, the age is important. My mom didn't want to see my dad or his boyfriend, so this was our routine. My mom would pick us up after school, and sometimes my dad would pick us up. But on this particular Friday, my brother wanted to stay at my dad's, but I wanted to be at my mom's. So my brother left with my dad, and I left with my mom. My mom had late shifts for the weekend, so she ended up dropping me off at my dad's. When I walked inside, I heard moaning, but not from two voices. It was three voices. I immediately knew something was up. I walked upstairs to see my dad, his boyfriend, and my brother doing the nasty. Like for part two. Story time on how my dad had a threesome with my brother and another man. Like I said, I walked in and my dad, his boyfriend, and my brother was doing the nasty. My dad was actively sticking his mm -mm inside of his boyfriend's mm -mm. And my brother was sitting in between the mix. Traumatized isn't the word. They all jumped up, but I ran outside and immediately called my mom. My mom came back so angry, she started throwing a whole bunch of books at my dad. But I just held her back and we all left. My dad ended up getting married to this guy and they adopted a child. My mom got full custody of me and my brother and my dad isn't allowed to see us anymore. My brother is going to therapy and said that it was forced and that he didn't want to. Do I miss my dad? No. Good riddance. Story time on how I had a one night stand with my Uber driver and my girlfriend heard the whole thing. Okay, so a quick rundown on how we got here. It was a girls night with me and my friends while we vacationed in Miami. We only had three days in Miami and we were on day two. So the next day I literally had to catch my flight and get back to Kentucky. Anyways, we went to a club in Miami called Story and it was lit. And Tori Lanes just happened to be performing that night. Ow, I got a little too lit. My girls was there for me of course, but I ended up throwing up in the girls bathroom and my friends had to be there for me it was time for me to go i didn't want to ruin my friend's night so i told them that i would meet them at the hotel and i was just uber home they were so against it but i reassured them that i would be fine and that i wasn't as drunk as they thought i told them that i would keep one of them on the phone with me and that i would put my location on and we all agreed and this is where it gets crazy like for part two Part two on how I had a one night stand with my Uber driver and my girlfriend heard the whole thing. So like I said, me and my friends agreed that I would Uber home, call one of them and share my location.
location. So my Uber gets here and my friends walk me to the car and then they go back into the club. And this is where it goes down. So I called one of my friends, let's call her Jess, and she just stayed on the phone with me and told me not to hang up. All of a sudden, my girlfriend back in Kentucky gave me a call. So I told my friend Jess that I would call her back. At the time, me and my girlfriend had issues, so I didn't really want to stay on the phone with her, so I told her that I would call her back. When I hung up, instead of calling my friend Jessica back, I just called my girlfriend back again. Now me thinking I called my friend Jess back, I put the phone down and laid my head on the door, not paying attention whatsoever to who I actually just called. Then my Uber driver said, wow, you have great friends. I looked up for the first time to see a fine, sexy man staring at me, like for part three. Part three on how I had a one night stand with my Uber driver and my girlfriend heard the whole thing. Like I said, I looked up and seen a fine, sexy Uber driver staring back at me. Mind you, I don't even know that I'm on the phone with my girlfriend. We had small talk on how I had great friends and then I eventually asked him how much he made off of Uber. Chow, he said enough to take you out. I just smiled and said, unfortunately, my flight leaves tomorrow. So now we're in front of the hotel, but... I don't want to get out. I don't know if it was the lick in my system, but I was trying to get laid. I was kind of in that whatever happens in Miami stays in Miami type of vibe. But again, didn't know my girlfriend was literally on my phone listening to everything. I was so sick of my girlfriend's BS, so I just wanted to have fun. So I told him, come back here. I don't bite. He replied, he wants to, but maybe if I wasn't as lit. Then I said, oh, you must be scared. He came to the back and said, scared of what? And it went down like for part four. Part five on how I had a one night stand with my Uber driver and my girlfriend heard the whole thing. But like I said, my girlfriend blocked me on everything and my flight back home was literally anxiety attacks. When I got off of my flight, literally everyone from my high school was talking about it on social media. My girlfriend recorded a good portion of it and posted it on her Instagram. Honestly, me and my friends just denied everything. It was no face, no nothing. It was just voices. So eventually that rumor just blew over and no one really knew if it was true or not. And I honestly don't feel that bad for my girlfriend because she was constantly cheating on me which is why I did what I did I only cheated once my girlfriend was cheating on me multiple times that was one of the reasons me and my girls went on vacation in the first place anyways I don't condone cheating on cheaters but I just feel bad that she had to hear the whole thing moral of the story make sure you know who you're on the phone with <laughs> This is the true story of the Nutcracker. We've all heard of this story. Some might have even gone to see it live, but the true story is very horrifying. It starts with a young girl named Marie. She receives a Nutcracker for Christmas, which her brother breaks trying to crack a particularly large nut. She patches the doll up with some ribbon from her dress until her clockmaker godfather can properly fix it up. That night, while everyone's asleep, Marie sneaks back downstairs to be with the nutcracker but as the clock strikes midnight things go from a mildly creepy doll obsession to a full-blown horror movie rats pile up into the house from nowhere led by the seven-headed mouse king yeah a mouse with seven heads then marie herself is shrunken into a mouse size it gets crazier like for part two this is the true story of the nutcracker part two Okay, so boom, like I said, Marie herself shrunk into a mouse's size after rats piled up everywhere led by a seven-headed mouse king. But lucky for Marie, the other dolls, which were soldiers, sprang to life and started battling the rats. And the soldiers are led by none other than the Nutcracker. It doesn't go too well for the dolls until Marie takes off her slipper and chucks it at the Mouse King, distracting him long enough for the Nutcracker to kill him. Marie passed out and when she wakes up normal sized, the room is a complete mess. And there are seven tiny crowns scattered around her. Years later, Marie professes her love for the Nutcracker and that night finds herself doll size again. But this time it's permanent and she spends the rest of her life living with the Nutcracker. Story time on how I cheated on my husband with his son. Okay, so boom, let's get right into it. So I met my husband at my job where we quickly fell in love, got married, and the rest is history. My husband had a child from a previous relationship who was 17 years old. By the way, I'm 27 and my husband is 34. My husband was really great at his job, but he started treating me really bad. He was always working and had me stay home because he wanted to be the provider. He also bought food for me when I was hungry since I don't cook, but sometimes it would just be food that I didn't want. Before he leaves, he 
kisses me and makes breakfast for the house as if that's going to make anything better and only spends time with me on his one day off. It's ridiculous. Well, I started spending a lot more time with my stepson and we became really close. I started feeling something real between us and my husband was being horrible. So I made my move like for part two. Part two on how I cheated on my husband with his son. Okay, so boom, like I said, my husband was treating me horribly, so I made my move. I started feeling something real between me and my stepson. We watched movies together, we went grocery shopping together, and plain just enjoyed each other's company. I felt something real between us, and I know he did too. One day, once again, while my husband was at work, my stepson and I started watching a Netflix movie. I thought it was the perfect time to just go for it. He was laughing at one of the scenes and I just took his face and I kissed him. He jumped up and pushed me and said, whoa, why the f did you go and just do that? Then I said, I thought he just ran to his room and called his dad. My heart sank. My husband left me and took his son and divorced me too. Now I'm currently dating and have no luck and he's remarried with a beautiful family. I can't find a guy half what my ex-husband was. Don't be like me, appreciate Story time on how I sold my farts in a jar and made big money. Okay, so boom, let's get right into it. So I'm extremely broke. And because I'm broke, I did what many people would do and went to Google. I looked up ways to make money when you're dead broke as a woman. Dancers came up and also fans only and even selling my intimates. But I served the Lord, so I didn't want to do anything involving my body in a sexual way. No judgment, by the way, just not for me based on my beliefs. Well, anyways, I stumbled across a page of a woman. I don't know if she prefers her identity to be hidden, so let's just call her Hannah Montana. Well, Hannah Montana explained how she made 70 case selling her farts and it immediately one shocked me and two piqued my interest now this was something i could do i had to start my fart journey like for part two part two on how i sold my farts in a jar and made big money okay so boom like i said i stumbled across a page of a woman and i don't know if she wants her identity to be hidden so let's call her hannah montana well hannah montana explained how she made 70k selling her farts it immediately one shocked me and two piqued my interest this was something i could do Contrary to popular belief, there is a market out there for farts online. Believe it or not, people out there buy farts in many forms, varying from jars to lollipops that have been farted on by fart stars. So I quickly educated myself on how to provide this product, and I grew my audience pretty fast. Now I eat a lot of egg boils and fart for a living. I know you're jealous. <laughs>